speed of choice, what's it actually all about? Well, to me, it's quite simple. Keep your fishing simple, but logical. And that's why I want to talk to you about which size feeders to use and which shape feeders to use. And hopefully with this information, you'll be able to put it to use regardless of the venue that you fish. And that's exactly what feeder choice is about, is the venues that you fish, the terrain that you face with, the environment that you face with. Today I'm at Barston Lakes. I've got a large expanse of water behind me. So I'm fishing a feeder at range. So for a start, I want my bait within the feeder to remain for a long period of time because I might be having 20, 30 minute casts waiting for a bite. So therefore I'm using a hybrid feeder. There's two feeders I stick to, a flatbed method feeder and a hybrid feeder. As you can see, the reason why I love them so much is there's so many different sizes that allows you to tailor your fishing dictated by the environment that you face with. As soon as you go to a big carp water like where I am now, especially during the spring months and the summer months, you want a feeder that has some authority behind it. A, it's got some weight behind it that allows you to cast at that further distance, but once that feeder's actually fishing in the water, there's a reason why the fish want to come to your hook bait because there's a focal point of bait there. In the winter months on these kind of venues, a small feeder is really effective, but in the summer months, it's always best to go on to the bigger feeder and that's how you're gonna catch those bigger carp. There's just a larger volume of bait there to hold them in. What I love about a hybrid feeder is the walls around the feeder. Whether you're fishing a feeder in four, three, four, five foot of water, or even deeper on your big open reservoirs for bream, the hybrid is just such a good way of presenting your bait. The walls protect the bait, so even when that feeder's falling through deep water, 12 foot or above, you know that once that feeder's hit the bottom, everything's intact and, every, and you're fishing efficiently. When you come into these big carp waters, it's also important to think about the setup that you use within the feeder. So when I'm going to these waters, because I'm using a longer rod to cast those further distances, I want that extra cushion. So if I'm allowed, I will always use an elasticated feeder setup. And the beauty about that is you can imagine with a 12 foot or a 13 foot or even a longer rod, you've got that stiffness, of, stiffness in the rod that allows you to cast those further distance up to 100 meters and over. But when you've got those fish under your feet, you've got the cushion of that lovely elastic that prevents hook pulls and just makes the whole process so much more enjoyable and in turn less hook pulls. So it's really important if you're allowed to use an elasticated feeder, in my opinion, with a rod of 12 foot or above. The other feeder is the flatbed method. Now, the flatbed method feeder is a feeder that I will always choose when I'm going onto a small commercial water. I might be using a nine foot or a 10 foot rod. I might be only casting that feeder 15, 20 meters up to an island or even underarming it down the edge or in front of me in the deeper water but a flatbed method feeder works very quickly. The bait breaks down quicker because the water can get into that feeder. There's no walls around this feeder and that's why the water can get in a lot quicker and disperse that bait a whole lot quicker. But again, you're on a venue where you've got a larger percentage of fish per square meter. So the fish compete more aggressively with each other. They get to your bait quicker and you get more bites in the, in the process of that principle. So that's why a flatbed method feed is really effective, chuck it up to mud banks, down the margin in that shallow water, in conjunction with ground baits and pellets, it's just the ideal feeder that ticks all the boxes, are how I want that feeder to work, especially during the summer months when the fish are really competing and feeding well. So there you go, you've got feeder choice right from the smaller hybrids in the winter months when the water temperature is really cold, right up to your bigger feeders for your big open waters where I am today at Barston or Boddington's or any big open bream or carp water. You've literally got a feeder choice there to sue every style of fishing. So hopefully that information, you'll be able to put that to use on your local venue. Keep your fishing simple, keep your feeder choice simple and have confidence in what you're doing is the right thing and you'll definitely catch a whole lot more fish. Thank you.